Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore's Lost Tale, written for you by A.A. A. Milne and adapted for audio by Daniel Hines. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore's Lost Tale Once upon a time, in the Hundred Acre Wood, the old gray donkey Eeyore was standing by himself. He was in a thistly corner of the forest, his front feet well apart, his head on one side, and he thought about things. Sometimes he thought sadly to himself, Why? And sometimes he thought, Wherefore? And sometimes he thought, Inasmuch as which? And sometimes he didn't quite know what he was thinking about. So when Winnie the Pooh came stomping along, Eeyore was very glad to be able to stop thinking for a little in order to say, How do you do? in a gloomy manner. Pooh was hardly ever gloomy, only when he ran out of honey, and he had a pleasant smile on his fuzzy yellow face. I'm stupendous and wonderific, said Pooh, who had just had a second lunch and was quite stuffed with honey and jam. And how are you? Eeyore shook his head from side to side. Not very how at all, he said. I don't seem to have felt very how for a long time now. Dear, dear, said Pooh. I'm sorry about that. Let's have a look at you. So Eeyore stood there, gazing sadly at the ground, and Winnie the Pooh walked all round him, once, twice, and then a third time paw tapping his chubby chin in a thinking sort of gesture. Something was wrong with the old donkey. And suddenly, Pooh realized what it was. Why, what's happened to your tail? The bear said in surprise. Why, what's happened to it? Said Eeyore. It isn't there. Are you sure? Well, either a tail is there or it isn't there. You can't make a mistake about it, and yours most absolutely and definitely surely isn't there. Then what is? asked Eeyore, sounding even more gloomy than normal now. Well, nothing at all, said Pooh, unless you count your own behind. There really should be a tail there. At least I had one this morning, the donkey said sadly. Let's have a look then. Eeyore turned slowly round to the place where his tail had been a little while ago, and then, finding that he couldn't catch up to his own rear, he turned round the other way, until he came back to where he was at first. And then he put his head down and looked between his front legs. And at last, he said, with a long, sad sigh, I believe you're right. Of course I'm right, said Pooh. That accounts for a good deal, said Eeyore gloomily. It explains everything. No wonder. A donkey can't be happy without his tail. Everyone knows that. It's as sure as rain makes mud. Or as bees make honey, said Winnie the Pooh, licking his lips. But you must have left it somewhere. Tails don't walk off all on their own, do they? They do not. Then you must have left it somewhere. I never move it. Somebody must have taken it, said Eeyore sadly. How like them, he added after a long silence. Pooh felt that he ought to say something helpful about it, but he didn't quite know what. He had never had a friend lose a tail before. So he decided to do something helpful instead. Eeyore, he said solemnly. I, Winnie the Pooh, will find your tail for you. Thank you, Pooh, answered Eeyore. You're a real friend, said he. Not like whoever stole my tail, he muttered. So Winnie the Pooh went off to find Eeyore's tail. It was a fine spring morning in the forest as he started out. Little soft clouds played happily in a blue sky skipping from time to time in front of the sun as if they had come to put it out and then sliding away suddenly so that the next might have their turn. Through them and between them, the sun shone bravely 
and a thicket of trees which had worn its furs all year round seemed old and dowdy now, beside the new green lace which the oaks and elms had put on so prettily. Through the trees and bushes marched Pooh Bear, down open slopes of gorse and heather, over rocky beds of streams, up steep banks of sandstone into the heather again, and so, at last, tired and hungry, to the tallest trees in the Hundred Acre Wood. For it was there, in the Hundred Acre Wood, that Owl lived. And if anyone knows anything about anything, said Pooh to himself, it's Owl who knows something about something, he said, or my name's not Winnie the Pooh, he said. Which it is, he added. So there you are, Owl has to know. Owl lived at the Chestnuts, an old-world residence of great charm, which was grander than anybody else's, or seemed so to bear, because it had both a door knocker and a bell pull. Underneath the knocker, there was a notice which said, Please ring if an answer is required. Underneath the bell pull, there was a notice which said, Please knock if an answer is not required. These notices had been written by Christopher Robin, who was the only one in the forest who could spell, even if it wasn't perfect. Owl, wise though he was in many ways, able to read and write and spell his own name, W-O-L, yet somehow he went to pieces over delicate words like ketchup and buttered toast. Winnie the Pooh read the two notices very carefully, first from left to right, and afterwards, in case he had missed some of it, from right to left. Just to be sure, he gave them a quick final look from bottom to top. Then, to make quite sure, he both knocked and pulled the knocker, and he pulled and knocked the bell rope, which let out a loud ding a ling ling. And just to be safe, he also called out in a very loud voice, Owl, I require an answer. It's Winnie the Pooh speaking. There was a bustling rustling from inside, and then the door opened, and Owl looked out. Hello, Pooh, he said. How's things? Terrible and sad, said Pooh, because Eeyore, who is a friend of mine and of yours, has lost his tail, and he's moping about it. So could you very kindly tell me how to find it for him? Well, said Owl, puffing himself up importantly, the customary procedure in such cases is as follows. What does crustimony proceed cake mean? said Pooh. For I am a bear of very little brain, and long words bother me, though I do love cake. It's uh, not a cake you eat. What it means is the thing to do. Oh, as long as it means that, I don't mind, said Pooh humbly. The thing to do is as follows. First, issue a reward. Then... Oh, just a moment, said Pooh, holding up his paw. What do we do to this, what you were saying? You sneezed just as you were going to tell me. Well, I didn't sneeze. Yes, you did, Owl. I heard it with my own ears. Well, excuse me, Pooh, but I didn't. You can't sneeze without knowing it. Well, you can't know it without something having been sneezed, said Pooh. But he was afraid he had lost track of what exactly he meant. What I said, said Owl, was first issue a reward. You're sneezing again, said Pooh. Then he went, issue, 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 to demonstrate. A reward, said Owl, very loudly to be heard over Pooh's sneeze demonstration. We write a notice to say that we will give a very large something to anybody who finds Eeyore's tail. I see, I see, said Pooh, nodding his head. Talking about large somethings, he went on dreamily. I generally have a small something about now, about this time in the morning. And he looked wistfully at the cupboard in the corner of Owl's parlor. Just a mouthful of crackers or cream or chocolate or whatnot, with perhaps a lick of honey. And then, said Owl, we write out this notice and we put it up all over the forest. A lick of honey, murmured Pooh to himself, but saw Owl had ignored him and pressed on. Or, or not, as the case may be. And he gave a deep sigh and tried very hard to listen to what Owl was saying. But Owl went on and on, 
using longer and longer words until at last he came back to where he started. And he explained that the person to write out this notice was Christopher Robin. It was he who wrote the ones on my front door for me. Did you see them, Pooh? For some time now, Pooh had been saying yes and no in turn with his eyes shut to all that Owl was saying, trying to sound like he was paying attention. He wasn't. And not thinking about honey. He was. So having said yes, yes last time, he said no, not at all, now, without really knowing what Owl was talking about. Well, didn't you see them? said Owl, a little surprised. Come and look at them now. So they went outside. And Pooh looked at the knocker and the notice below it. And he looked at the bell rope and the notice below it. And the more he looked at the bell rope, the more he felt that he had seen something like it somewhere else sometime before. It was familiar. It was something. Handsome bell rope, isn't it? said Owl. Pooh nodded. It reminds me of something, he said. But I can't think what. Where did you get it? I just came across it in the forest. It was hanging over a bush. And I thought at first somebody lived there, so I rang it and nothing happened. And then I rang it again very loudly, and it came off in my hand, and as nobody seemed to want it, I took it home and... Owl, said Pooh solemnly, suddenly realizing where he'd seen the bell rope before. You made a mistake. Somebody did want it. Well, who? Who? Eeyore, my dear friend Eeyore. He was... He was fond of it. Fond of it? asked Owl. Attached to it, said Winnie the Pooh excitedly. Owl, this is Eeyore's missing tail. It must have snagged on that bush and fallen off. Oh my, said Owl. A donkey's tail on my front door. We have to get this back to him. Right away, agreed Pooh. So with these words, he unhooked it and carried it back to Eeyore. They then went and fetched Christopher Robin, who nailed the tail back into its proper place. Once it was secured, Eeyore frisked about the forest, waving his tail so happily that Winnie the Pooh laughed and laughed and had to hurry home for a little snack of something to sustain him. And, wiping his mouth half an hour afterwards, he sang to himself proudly, Who found the tail? I said Pooh at a quarter to two, only it was quarter to eleven really. I found the tail. The End Thanks for listening! 